Welcome to the Cheese Lab. I'm Miss Burnden from Carlmont High School, and I'm going to take you through sort of a little introduction and a demonstration of the lab that is in your first at-home lab kit. This is the Cheese Lab. Right, so we're first going to talk just a little bit about how cheese is made. The base for all cheese is going to be milk, right? Usually cow's milk, sometimes other kinds of milk. Okay? And the process of making cheese basically involves curdling the milk or forming curds. Okay, so you typically use some sort of curdling agent, some sort of solution that you add to the milk to help it curdle. And the curdling process is basically all of the fats and solids, the proteins and everything from the milk, congealing and solidifying into chunks, and then it's, that separates them from the whey or the liquid. Okay. So traditionally, things like buttermilk have been used. Backwards. Oh well. Um, things like buttermilk have been used to curdle cheese or to curdle milk into cheese. Um, you add a little bit of buttermilk to a large container of milk, and over time it causes those curds to form that you can then filter out from the whey. So you can have just the curds left behind that you use to make the cheese. Um, there's also some enzymes that can be used to make cheese. So this is renin. Renin is an enzyme found in the lining of baby cow's stomachs that curdles milk as well. So you add a little bit of renin to the milk and it will curdle it into curds and whey that you can then use the curds to make cheese. However, some people object to the use of renin to make cheese because it's not technically vegetarian and they don't like the idea of the enzymes from the baby cow's stomach and all of that. So Biotech has come up with a solution. And the solution is a synthetic or lab-made version of renin that doesn't involve any baby cow's stomachs or anything like that. Um, this is called chymosin. So chymosin is almost exactly the same enzyme as renin, but it's been made in a lab synthetically um, to avoid all of the sort of ethical issues with renin. So you've been assigned either one of these three curdling agents or the negative control, which is just plain milk. And you're going to be testing both how long it takes for curds to form with your particular curdling agent and how many curds form using your curdling agent. So I'm going to take you through the lab process now. So for curdling agents, we have whole milk, which is the control, buttermilk, renin, which is from the baby cow's stomach, and chymosin, the lab synthetic variety. All right, so some of you may have gotten a baggie with pre-weighed dried milk in it. For others of you, it may already be in the tube. So if it's in a baggie, you're gonna go ahead and transfer it carefully to the tube. Try not to spill. It's already pre-weighed, so it should be an exact amount. You wanna kind of funnel it all into the tube. If you spill, you just wanna wipe it up and put it back in the tube to make sure you get the right amount. or you may start with it already pre-weighed in the tube like this. Right. Either way, the next part is to add water. You're gonna add water up to this 10 mil line. Tap water's fine. You're not adding 10 milliliters, you're filling up to the 10 mil line on your tube. All right, so you may have some bubbles in your dried milk powder, so screw on the cap tightly. Invert a couple times. And you may find that you've lost some volume. So I'm now down a little bit below 10, so I'm gonna fill it up to 10. Okay. All right, then you wanna mix by inverting a couple of times. Okay, once you've mixed it, you wanna get your small curdling agent from the fridge and you wanna get your Sharpie. This should be labeled depending on what curdling agent it is. So R is for renin, C is for chymosin, B is for buttermilk, M is for just plain milk. Okay, you wanna add that to your label here, right? So dry milk plus, in my case, it's gonna be renin, but you should write in here whatever your tube is. You're basically just gonna add this curdling agent. Remember, it should be cold. So if you haven't put it in the fridge, put it in the fridge while you're watching this video. You're gonna dump the entire contents, you wanna tap it to make sure you get everything in, into your milk. You're gonna put the cap back on. The next thing you wanna do is invert it. So flip it upside down a couple of times gently, make sure the cap's on securely. And then you wanna put it somewhere warm. So we typically suggest your armpit, but you could also tuck it in the waistband of your shorts or whatever, um, just somewhere where it's gonna be at body temperature. Okay? You wanna keep it at body temperature for 15 minutes Okay, and you want to check it every five minutes during that time. Okay, you're checking for curds. 
So again, you're putting the tube at body temperature for 15 minutes and checking every five minutes for curds. All right, so when you're checking for curdling in your tube, you wanna kind of rotate your tube a little bit and see what you see. You wanna be pretty gentle with this. And really what you're looking for is this kind of speckling that you see here. That indicates the start of curd formation. All right, you might also see larger chunks as time goes on, but these little um, speckles are really the first sign of curdling that you might see. As soon as you see any signs of curdling, as soon as these clear speckles emerge, you wanna write down the time it took to curdle. So the time from when you put the tube in your armpit until when you first saw curds. At that point, you don't have to keep this, um, keep checking this anymore. You just wanna set this aside and after 24 hours, you're gonna measure the amount of curds. As soon as you see curds, you can record the time to curdle and then set the tube aside at room temperature for 24 hours. If you don't see curds after 15 minutes at body temperature, set the tube at room temperature and check every 15 minutes for the next two hours. As soon as you see curds, record the time to curdle and set aside overnight. If after two hours you don't see curds, then you can check every two hours until you go to bed. And if you still haven't seen curds, check first thing in the morning. As soon as you see the curds, record the time to curdle and set them aside until 24 hours after you started heating. All right, so the first thing you wanna do is you wanna make sure you have a clean space where you can work. And it can really be kind of anywhere. Um, I'm using a corner of my kitchen table. You could use a counter, anything like that. You just want it to be a surface that you can clean. So at this point, your cheese has been sitting for 24 hours. You're gonna go ahead and filter it so you can separate the curds from the whey. Okay, so you'll need your balance. Some of you may need to put the batteries into your balance. So if you go to the back and open the tab there, you should see the space for them. And you wanna check the batteries so the pointy out end is positive, the flat end is negative, and there should be markings in the wells for the batteries, negative and positive. So make sure that you line those up properly. So negative to the negative sign, positive to the positive. Okay, double check, and then close it back up. And you'll have either a circle of filter paper with a plastic funnel, or you'll have a coffee filter. Okay? Either way, the first thing you want to do is you want to pre-weigh whichever filter you have. So if it's coffee filter or filter paper. You want to zero your balance and place it on there. Make sure it's only touching the tray. It's not like touching off the edge or anything. And you want to record the exact mass. Right? So you're going to write this in your notebook. Mass of filter paper. Right. Whatever yours happens to be is what you should write. It may or may not be the same as mine. Right. If you're doing the coffee filter, same deal. It's even harder to make sure that it's not touching anything else, but you record the exact mass of your coffee filter here. Okay. The coffee filter is easy. So if this is the one you have, it's pretty straightforward. You just want some sort of container. A mug is fine, anything like that. You're gonna open this up and you're just gonna sort of rest it in here. Okay. Just like that. And you can pour the liquid straight in here. Okay. If you're using the filter paper, you're gonna to wanna to fold it, okay? So you fold it in half, then quarters, then eighths. All right, and then you're gonna unfold it back to quarters. You're gonna take your funnel. You wanna find a smaller mouthed cup because the funnel has to be able to sit in there. Okay, and then you're gonna open this up. So you can see how there's sort of four layers here. You want to open one of the side pockets. So on one side, there's just one layer. The other side is the other three. Okay, and you want to kind of pop it out. So you have basically a pocket here. Okay, be careful you don't do right in the middle because it's not a pocket. All right. And you're going to set that in here. And then you'll pour your milk straight into the pocket. Make sure you're not letting it spill. Okay, you're going to take your tube. And you're going to pour the whole contents into the cup. If you need to kind of tap it to get the rest out, that's fine. Again, try and make sure it doesn't touch the bottom. You're gonna recap the tube. Um, I would suggest rinsing this out really well. You may wanna run it through the dishwasher. You can reuse it later. And then the cup you're gonna put somewhere safe and you wanna let it sit probably at least overnight until it's completely dried out. Um, so you can see how it's very wet right now still. You want it to basically completely dry. So some of the liquid will filter through, the rest will evaporate. You'll be left with just some sort of white, crusty stuff at the bottom. Those are your curds. All right, so put it in a safe space until it dries.
Okay, so it's been 24 hours at this point or close to it. And you can see that everything is dry inside of the filter paper. That's what you wanna look for. And you can actually see the curds down here in the bottom, the chunky white stuff. Those are your curds, right? So I'd like you to take a picture of this, sort of a top-down view just like this, um, that hopefully can show how many curds are present. But then to get a scientific measure, we're actually gonna, we're gonna weigh the amount of curds. So you should have recorded the mass of the coffee filter alone in your notebook, right? So that was yesterday before you did the filtering. You may have also written it on your filter paper. Although sometimes if the liquid gets too high as it bleeds through the paper, it can blur this. So do make sure it's in your notebook. And we're gonna go ahead and weigh this. So you're gonna open up your balance. You're gonna turn it on. Okay, it should go to zero automatically. If it doesn't, press the tear button. And then you're gonna take your coffee filter and you're gonna place it on the stand. You wanna be really careful that it's only resting entirely on the, the um, metal part, the like actual scale part, that it's not like somehow resting off the edge because that'll take the weight off the right spot. So you're gonna make sure it's fully only resting on the balance itself. And then you're gonna record that value in your notebook. So this is 3.11. So this is the mass of the filter plus curds, all right? And then you wanna clean up. So the cup probably has some whey in it. You wanna wash that out, clean it real well. This, as long as you've taken the picture and you've gotten a good mass, you can go ahead and throw this away. Do not eat the cheese. It will not be good for you. And make sure you turn off your balance. And lastly, you can calculate the mass of the curds by finding the difference between the final mass and the mass of just the fil coffee filter. So 3.11 grams minus 2.02 grams. It's gonna leave you with, what would it be? So 1.09 grams is the mass of your curds. So record that, maybe circle it. This is data that you're gonna enter into the data table in the Google form. You should also take a picture of the curds in your filter paper and try to judge based on this numeric scale about the level of curds that you see in addition to the mass that you found. When you're done, make sure you've recorded your data, clean your workstation, and put away your lab kit supplies in a safe place. The end.